Hello, this is Running Robert, and today we're going to be talking about the Xeris Pharmaceuticals XERS Quarter 2 2024 summary. Today is the 19th of August 2024. And in the summary, we're going to look at that quarterly report that just came out a week, week and a half ago. We're going to look at the bullish parts, we're going to look at the bearish parts, and try to figure out where the stock's going. So I generally follow Small Cap Pharma. I do games. I do a little bit of everything. So if you like what I'm doing, hey, please like and subscribe. It helps out a lot. And thank you. Uh, disclaimer is I do not own shares at the moment. I did have a, this was my top stock of last year. I did reduce some of my position from around $3 and the rest below $2.50, which until just recently looked pretty good. I'm an amateur investor and any advice given should be followed up by our own due diligence and information given is valid for today, the 19th of August, and the slideshow will not be updated, but new news, new slideshows. So let's just look at the, re the revenues right off the bat because that's the best way that we're going to start with this conversation. So uh, there's four products, four major products that they have at the moment that are selling. So you have Gvoke, which uh, got up to 20 million of sales. That is up 3.4 million from quarter one, 2024. So that is very good growth. Uh, we have Caveus, which is 13.1, which is up 0 0.1 million, which is actually fantastic seeing as there's a generic on the market. And RecordLev is 13.3, it's up 2.7, so a pretty good quarter overall with everything going on. And then uh, Ugala, that's EU Devoke, I don't, I cannot pronounce it, so I'm not going to try. It's about 1.5, uh, and that is up from 0 0.4. So overall, a very strong quarter of growth that is going on there to make up to $48 million in revenue. So they ended the quarter with $77.6 million. Uh, the net loss was $13 million. Uh, they're, they expect $190 to $200 million in total net revenue for 2024. And that's tightened up from $170 to $200. So that's definitely very important. Um, I, again, I'm still estimating that they're going to spend about $220 plus million in 2024. And they spent $111 million in the first half. So pretty much right in range. Um, Expected year in cash is expected to be 70 to 60 to 75 million. That's tightened up from 55, so a little bit up. And then debt. We have 15 million due in 2025, 34 million due in 2028, 200 million after that. So we need to start seeing that recovery. I'm not really worried about the 2025 debt. I'm really not worried about the 2028 debt. It's after that that we have to really kind of start looking at it. So the product. So uh, the big thing with GVOC, it was impacted in February and March by changes in healthcare affected by cybersecurity breach and co-pay assistance issues. Q2 was a great recovery for it. So we went down a little bit and they showed a good increasing, heading a new uh, record for GVOC sales. So I can't really argue with that. Uh, Caveus, it's successfully fighting off the generic with a small increase. And we're going to have to look forward to see if they can keep this up there probably should be a class that is taught on them fighting off the generic for Caveus. It is a rare disease and they just offer a lot of assistance for that group stuff like that. So at the moment, the generic has not really been able to get in there because people are like, well, I can take the generic and get no support or I can pay for the more expensive drug and I'm going to get a lot more support. So definitely a, Xeris is putting a master class in how to fight off a generic in this kind of niche. Uh, Recordlev is better growth, but the key to the company's survival itself, they need to continue to ramp up their growth. So as much as I hate to say it, at some point, Caveus will drop. So this is going to be the recovery for that. And of course, EUG Vogue never expected to be a huge part. Obviously, 1.5 million sales is a static, so we're very happy with that. And we're going to kind of move on from there. So the pipeline and the partnerships. So uh, we have a deal with Amgen for TEPZ. Uh, this is definitely the biggest driver of the stock going forward as the drug currently sells between 1.5 and 2. They're going to be working in the Xerojet. Uh, there was no real news this quarter. I don't expect anything probably until the end of this, uh, end of this year for news because they need to start getting trials together and everything like that. Uh, we are also working with Beta Bionics, and again, not much is known about the deal. We have a basic parts of it, but I'm not really going to put any value to it at the moment because I'm just unsure. And then we completed both formulations for Regeneron. Uh, stability is currently in place. It's a six-month stability. So we might get news about the program late in 2024, early 2025. So pretty much the end of this year 
could be lit, which is why I'm still covering stock because obviously if they can hit Amgen and Regeneron deals, boom, you're done. You're good. Oh, excuse me. All right, so, and then XP8121 is preparing for their end of phase two meeting. The drug had a successful phase two trial. Most likely it will need a phase three trial, but maybe we can get lucky. So is the call good or bad? So overall, compared to last quarter, oh God, yes, it was much better. Although the company still has too much of a net loss. And I do believe that the year-end cash is unique since it really doesn't add up. So they said 77, but their, their things were not adding up. Is They're probably going to go down to 60 million around then. So maybe they're expecting some kind of revenue that I am that we are not aware of at the moment, but we're going to have to watch on that. Of course, we definitely need more record live growth to help drive momentum. And as far as partnership deals, again, I don't expect anything till later in 2024, early 2025. That's when it's going to get a lot very interesting here. So overall, the stock is recovering from 175 earlier in this year. Uh, we can see that a little bit. We have to see if sales can continue because I believe it's only a matter of time before the partnerships start to bring in serious cash. And that's really what we're looking at. One of the reasons I did drop my investment is they said, oh, we could be net, you know, net ca uh, net zero for cash loss at the end of 2023. And that did not happen. So again, 15 million net loss is not terrible, but they need to probably get that in rain a little bit to help get as many quarters as possible for those sales deals to go through in partnerships. Um, I definitely might retake a position as there are a lull or a drop in the stock before the next earnings. Um, obviously, again, I'm anticipating the end of the year to be on fire for this company. And so I definitely want to take a part of that. I know that we're probably going to go through some just, you know, maybe a little higher. And then we're going to probably get our nice little lull in between reports. And that is probably when I'm going to look to buy. So I hope this helped. I hope this gave you enough information. Thank you very much for watching and listening. And I hope you have a wonderful day.